This is Start, Grow, Manage, where we help managed service providers achieve the impact, freedom, and wealth you imagined back when you started your company. At Start, Grow, Manage, our tools, practices, and processes help you engage, energize, and execute on building a business that empowers an extraordinary life. Learn more about our programs and how they can fuel your fire at startgrowmanage.com slash learn more. Let's go. Hello and welcome to the Start, Grow, Manage podcast. My name is Joe. And I am Jeff. And I've been talking about my soreness from snowboarding. I've told everybody here and for anybody who is curious, skiing gives you no advantage when you try and snowboard. But the most important lesson I've learned, you know, in sort of yoga teaching, I teach as well this idea of approaching things with a beginner's mind, right? And it's interesting because this is the first time I think in decades probably where I've been a true beginner. I had no knowledge going in and I had that experience of being a beginner. And I think it's really humbling to come from that perspective and realize where other people are and how they are in their journey. Here I'm coming to snowboarding and I've got this teacher who's teaching me and he's trying to explain these things to me. And I'm like, dude, I just can't stand up. So for all of our clients and everything, we come at it from this perspective of we know what we're talking about and they have literally no idea right? Literally no idea. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. But what we're really going to do today is we're here with Damien Stevens, who started uh, uh, Serverocity and has a really interesting story to tell about the business. Damien, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself to get started? Sure. I started Serocity because I didn't know any better. So uh, <laughs> if anybody started a business before, they thought it would be easier. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> What's a bit of the backstory before you got the serosity? So what are you interested in? What do you do? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm very blessed to have uh, three kids and an amazingly more than she should be patient wife. And what led me to starting serosity, though, is I was an MSP. And I probably, like a lot of MSPs, I understood the tech. I can do this and do that and I can learn things. And so, of course, we were growing pretty rapidly. And that was both exciting and utter chaos. We went in one year from four to, um, let's see, I think 19. Um, at the MSP? At the MSP. And so that a few, Utopia? it was actually a, a different one before that. The biggest part about that is I was the one managing the backup. And so we were using the best software you could get then. And it sent me lots of emails that I promptly didn't want to read, but I was diligent about if it said error, read, whatever, I would go fix it. That's what you did then, right? And, and our biggest client called, all their servers were down. They had five servers. That was our biggest client because back then managed services. Only now do I know we were managed services because we were like, this is awesome. Like they pay us every month instead of just selling break fix. That was at the beginning, you know, <laughs> now I know we were kind you of, said, oh, wait. Monthly recurring revenue is really M MRR is the showing the, up. <laughs> MRR is the three best things I learned from that business. So, um, so there's, but there's two sides of it, right? <laughs> I like that. Three best. There's so, the opposite side of it, right? So MRR is brilliant. You got the money coming in, but right. you also have to deliver the service, right? Yeah, that's pretty important, as it turns out. <laughs> so it ends up with your ass on the line with all of these backups and these emails that yeah. you don't want to read and end up deleting without reading them, and then these red errors that you have to go fix and all of that, right? Yeah. If you think about the early days of many services, right? This is like 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003 time period. So PSAs and RMMs and all that would is either nothing or just completely nobody knew we were in doing this it was a brand new game so we had no idea um we were just hustling whatever a client needed let's do it and back what we had started as before is we were not only break fix but we built the computers and sold them i know that seems crazy to talk about in this day and age right but we would, i remember those days i remember yeah. those days where we'd be building 50 machines that we'd have yeah. like we just had the assembly line set up yeah. And we had a homemade RM and a homemade. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That was back when PC enough. Anywhere was a pretty awesome thing. You know, yeah. uh, PC Anywhere, you're so fancy. <laughs> I was a VNC baby. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
VPN and VNC. That's the way I ran it. <laughs> that's exactly how you do it. That's exactly. Yeah. That's for the ones that had internet, not a modem. Yeah. So you guys sound like a dinosaur, I think, to some of the newer guys when we talk about building a computer. But yeah. we grew, we sold break fix, we sold these monthly recurring contracts that we don't we didn't know was really a managed service. And we also we sold all these computers. And to give you an idea of the utter chaos, I came in one day and I had been working on a project for a client for about a month that was due like the following day. And we were deciding to build websites, which is the next company decided to do yeah. and build some websites. And where's my computer? We had a big order. We sold it. We had a big order. We sold everything. We sold our own computers. <laughs> and so it was gone. And we just sold it. There's nothing <laughs> yeah. left. And you can't remember, wait, I got to build a website. Make yourself a damn computer already. That's exactly right. Go build your computer <laughs> and then go do what you spent the last 29 days doing by tomorrow yeah, because it went when the computer went it was gone that was the right stuff was gone that was yeah. on the computer jump they didn't even pull out the hard drive they just no they didn't it, no, no i get it. it they wiped it and they, they marched it out the door i'm format <laughs> format c install windows ship that yeah so what you were doing with playing with this website stuff anyway it's not like it was important it's not like it was important to them no <laughs> it's, so, not like, it's not like it's real no just typing that's it typing a, pretend in htm what i mean come on yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i remember i had a guy that was in management and he was particularly motivational he's like, i just tell the developers it's just typing just type faster so i guess you could appreciate the chaos that we were operating through because we were growing so fast the processes the procedures they just weren't there and and i was managing the backups and despite all that i was still fixing them whatever the green dots turned red and the biggest client called five servers. Oh my gosh, we're down. They're panicking. If you guys have done that, that's not a fun day, even when not things go. Well. Yeah, not um, at all. It's stressful. They're standing over you. They're pacing around. And I, um, those were back in the days where you went on site to do a recovery. And yeah. so I go on site to do the recovery and everything's green saying it's good. So I'm thinking, well, this is not a fun day, but I'm good. And tens and tens of hours later, after being on with their tech support with a vendor and all those sort of things, I learned that we were able to take a successful backup of corrupted NTFS volumes. Oh, nice. Uh, and it was something like the particular firmware on the RAID all had a bug that all did something. You know, they all bought the new fancy stuff and bought RAID, which back then was expensive, which was great. They were a great client. They would spend money. You guys know the ones that won't. And so we were like, this is great. And then there was some bug across all the firmware and all the RAID. And long story short, we were taking successful backups of corrupted volumes and all of them were corrupted, any of the recent backups. So I had to go to my client and tell them, like, I can't restore your data. And I don't know if you guys have ever been anywhere close to that. I, yeah, I've um, been there. Yeah, I destroyed an email server for Daimler, Daimler Benz Berlin once. And that was 96, 97. So they weren't even completely sure they wanted to use email. This was in Germany. And they're like, email, ooh, ich weiß nicht, you know? Uh, and then, and then I'd managed to destroy all of their email and the CEO decided that, yeah, it was important enough that we should probably start taking it serious, but it doesn't sound quite as bad as your experience. So you're like restoring these backups they're all corrupted you had to go to the client your biggest client yeah Not the biggest that. client that would spend money when we asked them to you know like that <laughs> paid on time they paid on time I, and i've been there I had a very similar situation where a client where they're doing everything right and you think you're doing everything right and then you go to restore and you can't get the data and it's Sometimes, you know, we were in it for 60, 70 hours. I don't know. I don't know how long you were in it for. Mm. Every minute that passes, you're just like dying. Yeah. A little bit more. A little bit more. That's right. A bit more inside. And there, there comes a point. By the time you get to talk to them, you're dead. At that point, oh. you're right, Joe. There's nothing they can say that'll make you feel worse. Yeah. By the time you get in front of them, you know what you got to say. And I imagine, Damien, because we're pretty similar in our thinking, right? It's you've broken your trust with them. You know? Was that the end of the relationship with them? Yeah, it was. They wanted us to try to do this work around it. I think it turned out the accountant had a copy of the QuickBooks 
from seven or eight months ago, which was better than zero. And we were still the only IT they really knew. So we were willing to do whatever and serve them in the interim. But yeah, at a just point, I had to go to them and say, we've totally failed you. I've totally failed you. And that's something I don't ever want to do again, because it's not who I am. I felt like I let my team down. I certainly let my client down. And to a large degree, I felt like I had let my family down because mm. technology was my way up and out. And so this was my way out. And I just, it's just not who I am. And to be able to tell them we can't do this for you. So yeah, at the end of the day, there was something the accountant had for QuickBooks, but almost everything had to get recreated. And as you can imagine, um, all the work we did after that is not something they were willing to pay for. <laughs> you know, that was not going to get paid. And then I think at the end of the day, we narrowly avoided the, like litigation. That was the best outcome we could come. Yeah. Come with. And it still didn't feel like a win. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. like you're like, whoo, yes, I'm not getting sued yeah, today. We get sued today. Woo yeah, exactly. That's not a very good team mantra there. Yeah. That's right. then what inspired you to start service. Servosity. I keep saying it wrong. Joe's like texting me saying, don't say serverosity. Because I've got the, <laughs> like this need to put a whole server in it. But no, 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 it's not a whole server. It's just serverosity, which is a great name. I just, English is hard. And, and I still <laughs> Same words. It's me, guys. It's all yep. me. Anyway, so you had this experience and then you realized there was something that had to happen here. Yeah, that's that was the point where I was like, I have let them down, my team down, and I felt like my family. Yeah. And I said, to look, at this point, I'm going to either run away from IT and just do something I, way less stressful. I don't know what it is. Maybe skydiving. Safer than IT. <laughs> yeah, that's what led me to start Servosity, because I thought when it said success that I could restore. And I started talking to more and more MSPs and it, and I realized like no MSP wants to come on and say, yeah, I've lost the client's data. Like I talk to them all the time and they'll admit that confidentially, but they're not, that's not what goes on the website, of course. And they don't really want to raise their hand and say that on a podcast, but it's actually uncommon if they haven't lost a client's data. And it's yeah. not that any MSP that I've met is ignoring the emails or just not doing their job or doesn't care. It couldn't be further from the truth. They're actually most of the ones I've, almost all the ones I've worked with are some of the most hardworking, what I would call, I feel like MSP are the blue collar of the IT industry. And I mean that in the best way, like the world wouldn't work without them. And I started talking to more and more of them. And there's just, what I learned is there's about a hundred different ways the backup can shoot you in the foot. It can. And no, I've been shot a bunch of different ways. So I know <laughs> if you've been shot a few ways, like when you think you got one way, it's another way. Yeah. And most things, if it tells you good or success, like we're conditioned as people to go. Yeah. All okay. right. That's yeah. I can trust that it, it works. I kind of became obsessed with the problem. And I want to pause here just to say, this is actually very cool, right? Because it's one of the things we talk about all the time with our clients, with everything that we do understand and define what that problem is fix a defined problem that people have i love that you went out and you talked to the msps i know you didn't put this on your website but have you ever yeah and, and you have that tacit experience with the problem you understand it you're able to define it in a really clear way that somebody can understand right you're not going to sell this to a bank or a, or an airline like you're like msps have this problem and we're solving this problem for you. And, I, and now as I say that, okay, maybe you would sell it to a bank. But the point is that you're selling it to the person who's managing their services. You're not selling it to the finance person because it's very specific around the problem that they have. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, there's no uh, either business owner or service delivery manager or whatever that role is that's been there for too long that hasn't gone through this. Yeah. yeah. And in fact, just when people come to me and they're like, let's see if you're a good fit, let's talk to you and we have an exploratory call. We talk about a lot of things, but if they're willing to open up, it usually becomes basically one, how often do you test? And again, they don't want to put this on the website, but the answer is usually I got one client, we do it annually because they pay extra. Everybody else, we don't. Or I get answers like, well, I get like a screenshot every night that the vendor sends me. And I'm, again, a common myth, like screenshots are better than what I had, but a real common misperception is screenshots are testing. First of all, screenshots are only the boot volume. 
Yeah. That doesn't tell you anything about your data. I've actually talked to a couple of MSPs. They're like, holy crap, I never thought that far through it. And mm -hmm. they're like blown away, my mind blown. And so I know it sounds obvious, but I still have a few folks like. Do they, and then is that this fear come into their eyes? Yeah, this sinking situation? feeling like. Uh, talking about this, I'd be immediately thinking of all those backups that I thought were all green lighted and are ready to go. And then I'd have this fear, the same fear bubbling up. Oh God, I don't ever want to have to. Have Listen, I, I've, I've had that because that was an MSP probably even more recently than you did. I don't know. I got yeah. out like in 2015, but I've had that happen where the screenshot, the boot was good and the data itself, the data volume was corrupted. Uh -huh. Right. And, you know, we managed to recover the data, but it, there was some uh, blood clenching moments. Right. Right. That happened from the time that we realized what had happened to the time that we got the data back. It was that you're like, oh. <laughs> so this moved right along there. <laughs> so, how does Servosity solve the problem? Yeah, we looked at, for example, testing. The common conversation I'll have is, do you test? No, or very, very infrequently. What's the only backup you really trust? A tested one. Okay. And then, so you test maybe, only maybe less. How much data do you think you could lose before they would fire you? And the answer is somewhere between an hour and a day, depending on the client. But basically, nobody says, I could lose a week or a month's worth, and they'd be okay with that. And so you get this huge... Disparity between I test maybe annually and usually not for all clients. And the only thing I could really trust is a tested backup. And so what we basically do three things that are different. And it's because we decided to do people, process, and then technology. Yeah. And I know as a technology guy, that sounds weird to me, even when I say it. But if you don't have the right people and you don't have the right process, the technology won't really matter. And on that last point, but guys, I believe in that so much that we just recently have taken the 20, over 20 years I've been dealing with working on backups and now doing it at a scale that larger than any MSP. And we've distilled down, down into our process. And so it's available to go on our website and it's called Steal My Process. And so if they want to have us help them with this, great. If you don't, I want to help you so much as an MSP. I don't want you to go through what I went through. And it sounds like what Joe either went through or nearly went through. And so I do think the process is way more important than the average technical owner, at least like I was. So you can steal my process. That's how much I believe in it. If we're not the right fit, just steal my process, gain something from this. And the other reason I do that is I get the blessing of talking to so many MSPs, whether it's through my show or somebody reach out and say, can you help us? And in every interaction, I want to give. I want to give something so that it's not just, are we a good fit? Yes or no. Yeah. And now I know you can take away something. So the process is definitely a huge part of that. Yeah. But it's actually not just MSPs, but it's anybody who's good at something. Like people who start MSPs, they tend to be very good at technology. But you could be good at, you could be good at drawing or you could be good at driving. I don't know, whatever you're good at. Right. And you need to decide, I'm going to start a business around that. I mean, invariably. You don't put the processes in place. You're not focusing on the people. You're just focusing on the thing that you're good at. And that's where you get stuck in the hustle and people take your computer and while you're trying to do your website and everything's falling apart around you the whole time because you haven't thought of the process that says, no, don't take my computer. And that, that's super important. So I love that. Steal my process. What is it? It's on servosity.com and there's just a link that says hey, steal our process. Com, steal our process. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. But Maybe we'll, I need we'll to look up that domain. But... To Servosity and steal my process in the show notes. So the idea of Servosity is Servosity then tests your backup. Yeah. So what we realized the hard way is so for most of our existence, Servosity was really not that much different. And it pains me to say that than your data, your accident, your beam, your name it. Yeah. Um, I mean that in both a good and unfortunately a bad way. We sold you a technology tool and it did pretty much the same things. And we kept coming out with tools to help you test and help you protect yourself. And we started talking about a year or so before COVID with our MSPs about their challenges and not just what feature do you want? What's on the roadmap? What do we need to build you? But like actual conversations about what's the biggest challenge in this area. If we could solve this issue, if you could wave a magic wand, forgetting what we already have. Yeah. And finally we took all that and distilled it down and it came down to Basically, I like either the people or the process. What we do now is we manage it for you. So 
We do everything from deploying the backups to on a daily basis, proactively fixing them, testing them, which is obviously critical. And that includes testing daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly. So we built this whole testing regimen in for you because we realized at a certain point, technology would only do so much of this and giving you more basically to do's was not a recipe for our success. I was actually on a um, talking with an MSP in person recently, and they were telling me they lost a client's data. And he, the CEO was so frustrated by this. He had a, you know, we got CTO or service delivery manager, or forget what his role was, but you know, that we all know the guy that actually does this stuff. And so he went to his CTO and said, look, you come up with a process to make sure this will never happen. Figure out how we could do this, how we can test, et cetera. So CTO was very good about it. He came back, spent a couple months on it, came back and said, here's what we'll do. We'll do this and we'll test this. And we'll test that. And we'll do this. And he said, okay, great. What does that look like? And he said, our cost on it was going to be about $600 a month per server. <laughs> now, if you're in the MSP industry, that's <laughs> the cost. That's not a good sign. And so anyway. Only about four times as much as we're, three times as much as we're charging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a bad, that's a bad indicator. So he yeah. wanted it, but he couldn't deliver it. And so that, that's the thing I think that we're still improving on. This is not the end. And all vendors, Servocity included, needs to do a better job of making it easier for the MSP to be successful and not shoot themselves in the foot because of something they don't even know about. There's just so many ways backups can fail. The only way I know around that is incredible amount of testing. So that's why we decided to manage it for you. And the process comes in. That way, a lot of MSPs I'll talk to, if they have three different people set it up, they have three different variations in how it was set up. Yeah, uh, we've seen that too. And so if you don't know your backup retention policy, if you don't know your schedule, if you don't know these things and you can't know that there's consistency around them, then you really don't know what you don't know. So that's the kind of people part of it is that it's done for you. So at the end of the day, well, people generally hire us because either they know they can trust the testing and they're not going to get it themselves and or because they try to pull it off and they can't. And they know at the end of the day, they can focus. And I believe in focusing on what you're great at, good at. and good, yeah, and good at. And I've yet to meet an MSP that's generally, that's like, I'm the best at backups, period. And that's why my clients hire me, right? But that's beautiful. I love that there's a clear problem, clear solution. You know what you're doing. People know what they're hiring for you for. And that's, it's allowed you to grow, right? Absolutely. This has taken us, we were growing pretty well. And then this has really supercharged it because it was a blessing that we came out with this just before COVID. And then we all know what happened to the world when everything shut down and everybody got super busy. And so it went from a, we'll think about it. Some of the folks were adopting it to, I just can't keep up. And then yeah. the past several years with kind of the hiring shortages, more and more people are like, let's hand this over to you guys. It will be done better than it is now, not my words, theirs. And I can take my service delivery manager who was spending four, six, eight hours a week on this. And that was overseeing it. For example, where I got a client that came to me recently, he's like, I got a technician spending 37 hours a week on backup. Well, that's what I did when I had that, I had a failure where I like lost the data. Eventually I lost the client and then I just hired a person that was their job. Mm -hmm. And it, it cost me. It cost me dearly. My earnings per seat went down tremendously because that person doesn't generate revenue. Their only job is to make sure the backups are happening. But at the same time, the cost of having an engineer, that's all they do is way high. And then yeah. when you get really busy, if you task that engineer for something else, then all of a sudden you missed a week and you're like, oh crap. Yeah. And so you don't know, you don't really know. Yeah. And then you end up with the thing where that one person, it's tribal knowledge. They're the only one that has the yeah. information yeah. about that. And so, yeah, could they, yeah, it creates a whole nother problem. Holy moly. You yeah. <laughs> only that one. <laughs> so I was an MSP. I struggled. I wished I would test it. So all I did, I talked to other MSPs, but at the end of the day, this is overly simplistic, but the answer is I built what I wished I would have had. And I love it. So what got you to start your show, uh, MSP Mindset? Yeah, so the genesis for MSP Mindset is I work with so many MSPs. And the way I view my role is to help outside of backup and DR. Sure, call me about anything related to all of those things. 
but I get so many calls about how do I actually figure out my sales and marketing process? How do I actually pick a niche? What does the CV even mean? Whatever the topic is. And I get a lot of different calls because they'll just say, hey, who do you know? And so it, it started that way with, let me introduce you to Jeff over here. He knows a thing or two about how to build process or or let me introduce you to Joe in this particular case. And it's usually just one MSP to another. And I realized instead of just doing that one-on-one, -on -one, if I could bring some of these folks on and let them share some of the amazing stories, one, we wouldn't feel alone, quite as alone. Yeah, I love the MSPs that are sitting there going, I'm the only one with this problem, the only moron that can't figure out sales and marketing. Yeah. And you realize we all, almost all the tech guys raise their hand and go, yeah, that's. I actually amazing. think that's an important, just the idea of you're not alone in this. We've all struggled. Yeah. We've all been there. This is tough for everybody. I think that not being alone thing is a big deal. And that's, that's what ended up pushing us too, is that I didn't know how to run a business. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so, that's so it, I like right? that you're doing that. I like that you're doing that and, and letting everybody, hey, look. That's, that's been our, Joe and I, we've failed so many times. <laughs> and we know exactly how painful it is. We were like, no, please learn from our mistakes. Don't, don't reinvent the wheel because you don't have to. And the same thing, you're not alone. So anyway, your show is great. You've got so many really interesting topics and mindset topics there. How, how long have you been doing it? So we just started last year. So we're now every other Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern. The reason I started it, like I said, is to help. And it's called mindset because I do believe if you can change your mindset, you can change your business and your life. And it's for most of it's just between our ears, like the thing holding me back I see when I brush my teeth in the morning. And so I can learn from these and I learn from these guys and I change my mindset. And the metric for me isn't the views or likes or whatever it's every single episode we've had somebody either drop in like on a comment or drop a email and say i don't know why that was there but you were speaking to me this was my situation this is exactly what i needed to hear yeah. on that day i had an msp on one of the things we were talking about is he'd lost his largest client by far and it was something like sixty-five thousand mrr yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was like two thirds of his revenue. Yeah. And so he talked about what that did. That means people have to go. That's not a loss you can absorb. And one of the commenters commented, I'm losing a $66,000 a month client right now. And I don't, I don't know what to do. Like I'm getting probably both numbers wrong, but they're somewhere within a few thousand of that. And they were both struggling with the same thing. And so that's the metric for me is I don't need to help a thousand people. If I just help one MSP with a real issue and realize they're not alone and other people have gone through it, that's the metric See, for success. That's the thing. Like the second that I met you, that I knew about you, that <laughs> made me fall in love and go, I love this guy. <laughs> I love this guy because that's the real metric. Yeah. That's the real metric. That's where it's all at. So thank mm -hmm. you for doing that. Thank you for being that. Thank you for bringing that to the community because that's the game. Yeah. That's a game worthy of your life. So that's really awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's exactly right. Now, it's my pleasure because we want to provide for our families, make money, do this sort of things. The business has to make money, has to make a profit. And so many people help me and continue to. And there's just so many opportunities I get to be able to to sometimes it used to be I would just connect you to the right person. And now it's things like that are happening, even on the show, in the comments, sometimes live, you just get somebody and you're like, I bet they would have had a hard time figuring out who getting connected to somebody losing almost the exact same MR in their moment of need. And the guy I had on as a guest was like, oh, yeah, tell him, tell him to ping me. We'll talk after the show. I'll be happy to help them. Because the thing is, guys, this wasn't like a profit issue. This was, I need to probably lay off two thirds of my staff. I don't want to do that. These are great people. They didn't deserve it. Like you earn getting fired. You don't earn getting laid off. And so if you're a bad worker, that's one thing if you're not showing up. But so it was, how do I do this? How do I not tank my business for the rest of the people by keeping too many? But how do I make these tough decisions? And if you hadn't been through that's really will mess with your mind 
I feel like. If you're a person that cares about people, that's a tough one. Really hard. Yeah. That's really hard. Yeah. Good. Look, on that note, that seems like a downer. We need a joke now. Anybody have a joke? I'd like to end on a happy well, state. I was going to say that the happy thing is that we get to have this community and you get to be in the sauce this way. Is, That's right. And I'm really happy we found each other because we're up to the same thing and that we get to, to have this conversation now, share it with everybody, with our community. That's really Awesome. So it's, I know it's a little mushy. No, but that is the upside. <laughs> upside is the community. The upside is learning from each other's mistakes. I think the upside is it's not all doom and gloom. There are things that you can do. And, uh, and there are people out there going through the same stuff that you're going through. That's right. And, and they are happy to talk to you. So you don't have to be alone. You're That's only right. alone if you choose to be alone. We're out here. We're waiting for you, all of us, to talk to you, other MSPs, us people out here wanting to talk to you wanting to help you so don't suffer alone that's right appreciate you bringing it back to the positivity i feel energized and ready to go now we didn't end <laughs> depressing losing money that's great before we go though damien one thing I, if i could i'd like to try and put you on the spot here and say if you know uh, based on sort of your experience and your show and growing companies if you're Thinking of an MSP who's in the hustle, right? Who just lost their computer that someone took it away and sent it to somewhere else or, or who's in that moment. What would you say to them? How do they get started? What should they do today to start on that journey towards creating the business that they love? Yeah, I think it, I would echo a little bit what Joe said, right? You're not alone unless you choose to be. And I think it took me a long time to realize, I think two things. Number one, I'm not alone. I thought I was. And number two... I didn't want to say I've lost, I lost somebody's backup like that. And what I've learned is the more I'm willing to open up and say, hey, I've lost a backup as anybody else. And how did you deal with that? Because it's not as cut and dry as, oh, the client left us. We lost XMRR. You got serious issues in your own morale. Your team's wondering, can we even offer and deliver this service anymore? What are we going to do? Should, you know, like there's a whole bunch of issues that come out of that. And if you get to work with other MSPs, almost every single one of them will be willing to help. I think all of us would be happy to get them connected to the right people. So whether it's that or your show or mine, like you can get the help if you're willing to be vulnerable and talk about your challenges. There's so many people that are willing to help you take yourself to the next level by changing your mindset. And that's it is I'd be vulnerable. Yes. That's freaking awesome. All right. Awesome. Damien Stevens, Servosity. So go check out Servosity. Check out the show MSP Mindset. We will have links in the show notes so that you can find all the wonderful stuff that Damien's doing. And uh, this has been a great conversation. Damien, thank you for joining us and sharing everything that you've done and your wonderful experiences. My pleasure. Great. Uh, on that, Joe, you want to take us out? So for all of you out there, remember that you are loved all right guys until next time goodbye thanks for joining us and a special thanks to our subscribers consider becoming one right now and tap into our insights and instincts to help drive your business vision and success remember you didn't start your business to feel frustration you started it for freedom we can help you discover the impact freedom and wealth you always imagined Learn more at startgrowmanage.com slash learn more.